Hi everyone, it's Lori and welcome to the channel. Today's episode is all about how to shoot flowers submerged in water and then how to add ink for a very creative, ethereal look. So the first part of the video is how my tips for setting this up and then the last part we'll actually walk through some edits together. So you'll see here I have some tulips in a vase that I've been shooting and then I have this glass cylinder. Now you can also use any size vase but you do need something tall. A lot of people shoot with a fish tank so if you have one of those lying around you're not using that could be a great option. The only challenge with a cylinder vase like this is that you don't have much width. So you can only use really a single stem. Now I like to use these flower pins or flower frogs. I'll put the link to this in the description of the video. You can purchase these on Amazon, but you could also use putty or anything else that would hold your flower in place inside your container. Um, you do want a container that's clean. And then as you'll see here, I opened up the petals of the tulip. Tulips are really easy to open up the petals and it just gives it another look. And with it being submerged in water, it really brings out the color and you get lots of beautiful bubbles. Now, because this flower is tilting over, which is what I wanted, I'm putting it really close to the edge. So you would place your stem wherever is best to shoot in your in your container. Um, again, you only have a little bit of space when you're using a cylinder like this, so you just have to think through that. You also will need to cut your flower to height before you put it in your cylinder. So once you've done that, you do want to have your camera on a tripod and you're going to want to get set up and manipulate your light. So we're going to talk about light in just a minute. I do have an external light source. It's an LED light panel that I'm going to use. So once you're set up, you're going to just add your water. You can use tap water, distilled water, anything that you have. You do want to fill your vase completely. Now for shooting, a couple tips. I would encourage you to shoot with an f-stop of at least f11 or higher. Now you can go to f2.8 if you want it to be extremely dreamy. Now you'll notice in this shot that there are reflections in the upper right corner of my vase and that is coming from the light source to the right of my scene. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually moving the flower by turning it in the cylinder to avoid those reflections and I'm checking it in camera. So now I'm shooting behind looking for all the beautiful bubbles and light and you will see some of these final images when we get to the next phase. So I'm just hand holding as well as I shot on my tripod. Now for the reflections, my best advice is to manage your light. You're gonna to wanna to do this before you start shooting. You can turn your cylinder around. You can block the light with a black board. You can also just move the light around. So these were some of my submerged in water flowers that I took. Next up is going to be all about adding your ink. So we're going to talk about how to set up for adding your ink. Before you add ink to your cylinder, you want to think about your settings and you have a couple options. The first option is you could use a shutter release that you press as you're pouring the ink. You could also use a boost shooting mode. Now my preferred method is to use interval shooting. With interval shooting, you set up how many shots you want and how often you want them fired. Interval shooting is available in most camera settings. So first you're going to set up the number of seconds between shots. So you'll see here that I am going to do actually one second. It's a little hard to see the focus wasn't great um, with my GoPro, but I would encourage you to do two seconds. One second was a little short. And I would encourage you to do about 24 to 30 images. You could also do more if you want. Then when you press the shutter, the camera is going to shoot every one, two, however many seconds you tell it until it finishes the number of shots. This gives you time then to go ahead and start pouring your ink into your vase and you don't have to worry about what the camera is doing. So that to me is the best setup. Now to also manage the reflections, I did put up an additional canvas dark board. 
so that I was not getting those reflections in the side of my container. So I think that's a really great strategy. Now, I would encourage you to start with a couple drops. You could use a dropper. I am just kind of pouring it. This is a small container of white ink. You can also use uh, paint that you mix with water. Paint works just as well. Then I'm gonna add a couple drops right there in the flower to get it to bounce. Now remember, my camera is doing that interval shooting, so I don't have to worry about it. I had my focus set, I had the interval set up, and now I can just work the ink as I move through and watch how the ink expands in the image. So setup is the key to this process. Now I have not mastered this by any sense of the imagination. I have been playing with it with a couple scenes. I'm going to continue to work on really perfecting my process. A couple of my images were really messy and I think that's because I'm dropping the ink from the top. I would encourage you to get a water dropper and then you could put the water dropper in the water and then send the ink out. I think that would make it look a little bit neater and more ethereal. Now, after shooting on my tripod, I did decide to handhold to create some more macro close up images. So at this point, I am just grabbing the camera. I did reduce my aperture to 2.8 so that I could be sure to get a sharp image. I also increased my ISO. So I was moving around my subject and really looking for those closer shots, which you will now see here. These images, I really enjoyed the close up more than the pulled back images. And those were the ones that I really decided to edit. I just loved the softness and the dreamy effect that that light provided. So now we're gonna jump into editing. Okay, so let's work on editing some of these images. Now, this is an image that I already tweaked just a little bit. Um, these are images that I was actually hand holding and I intentionally shot them uh, underexposed because I was getting some reflections. I'm still, I haven't perfected my light with these images. So you can see I drastically underexposed them. So I'm gonna go ahead and first crop this one and so I think I'm going to bring it in about right there. I love the shape that I was able to capture and I love this kind of ink coming up like smoke. So I thought this one was really soft and pretty. I think that I shot these, um, let's see, I was shooting at 2.8. So I was doing wide open even though I underexposed. Um, so I wanted them to be really soft and ethereal looking. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I notice my histogram, I'm gonna open up the whites because that is where I shot in raw. So we have the opportunity to move those whites over and open that up. And that's what I was really assuming would happen. I'm also going to go ahead and alter my temp. I wanna bring it down and make it just a little bit cooler. I don't really want yellow tones with this image. And then the third thing that I find I have to do with all of these images is I'm going to go ahead and reduce or increase the luminance and the color noise reduction. I want it to be really smooth. Now, if you want the grain, you could leave it, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of that noise that just happens. I also was shooting at a higher than normal ISO, but I want these to look really smooth and just beautiful. All right, so the next step for this image, I do want to reduce the yellows. I want my green to be a little bit darker and um, a little more subdued. And then I'm going to increase the saturation on the reds and the magenta to just really make that um, flower pop. Now I think for this image, a vignette would be nice to really bring the eye right to the flowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of a vignette. And then you can decide if you need a little tone curve just to elevate those whites. So we could do that. Another thing we could do is try a mask. I've wanted to try that with this image. I'm going to do, let's try a luminance mask and I'm going to bring the brush over and click right there where that smoke or ink was. So let's go ahead and take the amount and I'm gonna scale that down, but I'm also going to adjust that luminance range. So I really want it to be the smoke going to, I call it smoke, but it's really the, um, the ink. So I don't want as much on my 
tulip. So yeah, I think I'm going to bring that over. So we've gotten the bright spots now that are on our um, image, but I really don't want my tulip. So let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead now, pop that exposure. Let me see. Let's turn off this mask and turn it on. It's very subtle. So that's one way that you could do it. I'm going to try another mask. I'm going to do a color range. And I want to come in and just select, if I can get it to select, there we go, some of this smoky area. And then I'm going to refine it. So there we go. I don't want it impacting my flower. So I'm just trying to find the easiest mask to do that. And then what I want to do now is just add a little white to brighten the, um, the elements right there. But I'll bring down the highlights. See, I don't want to bring those all the way down. So I'm getting a little bit of um, additional blown highlights right there. So all we have to do is intersect our mask using, I'm going to use a brush. And I'm just going to remove the mask from right here on um, our flower. So I'm hoping I can get that removed. Okay, so now let's look at this mask before and after. Let's go to the full mask before and after. It is still just impacting that area. Let's go to the color range. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not liking how this is working either. So let's delete that mask. And what we can do is actually, I'm gonna bring down the highlights. Uh, it's really right there that we need to adjust the highlights. So let's do a new mask. I'm gonna do a brush. I'm just going to brush in this area and go down and bring down the highlights. Just a little bit right there. And then I think for a new mask, let's select the background and see what it does. Detecting the background and what we can do. Okay, that's going to work. I just want to make it a little whiter. So I'm just going to increase the whites and even maybe try the tone curve, darken the shadows of the background, and then let's also adjust the color. I want to make sure that's really blue and warm. All right, and then if you're not sure if you like it, just go back up to your mask and you can kind of turn it, turn it on and off. And I think that did exactly what I want. The only other thing I would do for this image is I got some spots right here on the tulip that I don't think were there. I think some of it is the reflection and some of the um, light. I'm just going to clean those up as long as it doesn't make it look weird. There we go. And let's do this one. It's just too pretty of a um, graceful little tulip here for those to be distracting. And then the last step we could do is you could take it into Photoshop and add like an oil paint or into Topaz, but I just love this swirl over here. I may come in and darken this leaf, but I'm just going to give it a minute and think about it. Let me show you a couple other images. This was another version of this flower. I like this one because I have more space over here. So this would be one where very simple, we can come in, open up the whites, there we go. I'm going to work on the temperature, just make that a little bluer. And then I'm going to come down with my luminance and my color and just smooth that out with the, the noise reduction. I have a little bit of an edge showing right here. So I'm just going to come in and crop that a little bit and then crop this side. I think I like this version of the image better because again, it has some space over here and this part of the image isn't as blown out. So I think that really is nice. Um, I'm going to come in and see what it does to just pop those whites a little bit, bring down the darks. Again, I want to work on that temperature. And then I'd like to add, so we're going to come down to effects and then add just a little bit of that vignette. So I think I like this image a lot better. Now I could also use a brush and come in and brush on a little bit of light. So that's something I may consider. I could also clean up this tip. This would be an image that I've possibly would want to print, and so I definitely may want to clean it up. All right, let me show you a couple others from the set. This was one that I got in really close. I liked the shape again and this top portion, so that may be one that I would edit. This is one that I took from straight down. I thought this was really fun. So I think this one would just need, you know, a quick crop, 
come in. It might even look best as a square crop. I'm just going to kind of come in with this one. Now we've got a couple cleanups, so we're just going to quickly clean up. Do a little cleanup right there. Maybe a spot over here. Now this stem is looking a little weird because it was the tip, so I've got to decide if I want to do anything with that. What I may do is just darken it. So let's go to our image and we can see our whites look. I'm going to bring those over to just brighten it. I like that a lot. I'm going to come down and yeah, desaturate and then really darken that green. Um, you really have to decide what you want to do with that stem. I would probably play around with just getting rid of it and having just the flower. So that's something I probably would take into Photoshop and use the remove tool to get rid of that. And um, again, I would want to alter my tint. There we go. And again, maybe pop the whites. I like that one really nice and bright. Now I also had shot some straight with a 50 millimeter lens. And so I'm getting a different perspective. And you can see, I also shot this one at a, uh, this was at F2.8 as well. But you can see I exposed it brighter. And so it's giving us a different look than the first one. We've got some of those variations. And then this was one that I also shot with a different lens to get that bigger view. So this would be one that um, I could also do some simple edits with. My histogram looks good, so I think I would just bring down the tone curve in the middle a little bit. And I've got my temp set. And then I would come down and decide if I want to maybe soften it, reduce the clarity, maybe even add some dehaze just to give it an even dreamier look. Want to bring down those yellow tones maybe enhance the magenta and the reds. And this would be one I definitely would probably, oh, let me go back, take into Photoshop. I might clean up this line, maybe even add an oil paint just to give it a really um, dramatic look. And let's see if we add a vignette as well. Yeah, so I think that one is coming along, but it's a little messier than I like. I'm still learning how to get the ink to kind of come in and shape around the flower. And I prefer these a little bit more where it looks almost smoky and ethereal. But that's just, you know, my preference. You have to determine kind of what you like um, for the type of flower photography that you shoot. So I hope you will try this technique and play around with it. Again, as I continue to get a little bit more perfected in my process. I'm sure I will share an update. Thanks so much for joining today.